Hi there, everyone. Welcome to this webinar on neuroscience and active learning. We have about a little hour together today for this webinar. And I just want you to know, feel free to use the chat to ask any questions you might have. My colleagues are here to help, to answer. And you can also ask questions by using WooClap's message wall. And you can also react or give feedback as well. And of course, you can also comment on social media uh, with the hashtag Webinar. All right, let's get started. I'm so happy to be here with you all today. My name is Annelise. I am head of expansion at WooClab, and I'm very excited to co-host this webinar together with Eva Delvaux, who is digital learning manager at AP University of Applied Sciences and Arts Antwerp in Belgium. Hi, Eva. <laughs> Thank you for being here with us today. today. Hi, everyone. Uh, so, dear audience, um, I'm going to show you this connection slide, of course, first and foremost. So let's connect to uh, this WooClap event by scanning this QR code or by just clicking on the link uh, provided in the chat by my colleagues. We have some questions for you to start our session with, of course. And those that enter our session a little bit later, do not hesitate to just like click on the link that you'll find in the chat. Let's wait a little bit more. We have 10, 10 people connected right now, 11. And we can start in a bit. Okay, so. Where are you all from, dear audience? Can you pin yourself somewhere on this map of the world where you are located so we have an ID where you are coming from? And I see people there already from the US, South Africa, within Europe, somewhere in France, Belgium. Lovely to see this international audience on this colorful map. That's great. All right. And most of us are in Europe here. Lovely. Good. Thank you. Are you using Moodle, dear audience? Do we have some Moodlers amongst us today? All right. Seven, eight of them. Perfect. Some of them that aren't using Moodle, but that's all right. We have other LMSs with which we integrate as well. But nice to see that we have some Moodlers amongst us here. Good. Thank you for actively participating to our little icebreakers. And now let's take you through the agenda for this webinar. So in the first part, uh, we will talk about Steve Masson's theory about learning. Steve Masson, for those who don't know him, is a renowned professor and neuroscientist from the University of Quebec at Montréal, who is an expert in the domain of researching the effectiveness of pedagogical interventions and has many research papers and books on his palmarès about neuroscience linked to education. And for the second part, we'll dive into the use case of AP University of Applied Sciences and Arts Antwerp, and how they bring their students to better learning outcomes with the use of WooClap. And of course, how their integration process was successful. To then finally discuss the impact observed in the institution following the deployment of WooClap. All right, so let's go, dear audience. Let's start with the brain and pedagogy. So the seven principles of learning supported by science. And again, before explaining them, can you have a good guess of what these seven principles are to you? So take a wild guess on the seven principles of learning by Steve Masson, just to have an idea of what you still know about it or maybe don't, so we can bring you or shed some light 
on those seven principles. And I see repetition, exactly. I'm waiting to see some neurons or activation of neurons as well, but repetition is surely one of them. And basically, Professor Steve Masson, who is attached again to the University of Quebec at Montreal, he outlined the neurological principles with real positive repercussions on education and learning. So basically, we want to promote the brain's neuroplasticity. The brain can change at any given time, at any given age. And it's just the ease of the brain to change and adapt its neurological pathways. So when I see mirroring, space, learning, experiences, repetition, internalization, we get close. So here we are. And hi, Steve. First of all, the first thing is to activate your neurons. So you need to make sure that your students can activate their neurons. To enable learning, basically, your students must go through some challenges. It's cognitive and cerebral work in order to make sure your students activate their neurons and make sure that your students think, search, and question themselves. And secondly, you need to make sure that your students repeat the activation of their neurons. So repetition is necessary here. And we saw that as well in our word cloud. Um, repetition, it makes sure that the neurological connections are activated over and over again. So your students' neurons should be activated through the use of different educational activities. Let them exercise, do quizzes, ask questions, just go ahead and push them to solicit their knowledge, basically. And now thirdly, enabling memory retrieval is key here. So it's really about asking your students to retrieve the information they have in their memory. Each given time that your students are making the effort to look for something in their memory, it activates those neurological connections again. And thus, this is very important in learning. And the fourth principle that we want to explain is let your students explain it. Make sure that your students are prompted with the question, why? Because when you want to explain something, you have to make links between ideas. And this, again, creates the interconnections needed in the brain. It makes new neurological pathways. And this helps to structure knowledge and it will increase your students' ability to seek for information, basically. And the fifth element here is that of spacing out activities in time. When we repeat brain activity in a short time span, it will increase. But when our students are cramming their study material, it will not at all be beneficial to their learning. So instead, opt for spacing out learning activities over time for learners to make sure they can consolidate the learning content into their long term memory of course. And the sixth element that Steve Masson puts forward is the one of maximizing feedback. If your students are repeatedly making mistakes without being given feedback right after, it creates a neurological connection as if the mistake was to be right. So make sure to give as much and as precise and as honest feedback to your learners and this as often as possible. And last but not least, the seventh principle put forward by Masson is making sure to cultivate a growth mindset with your students. So making sure that our students have a dynamic state of mind in regards to their proper learning. It fosters their positive outcomes in learning, basically. So it's a state of mind in which the students trust their own ability to improve themselves and if an individual is convinced of being able to learn, actually having that belief to get better at something, they will be more able to learn and you'll see them actually improve. So now that we've seen all these principles, I would like to ask you, Eva, how do you feel about these? I think there are good principles. I want to make a bit of a job pedagogic suggestions to our teachers. Um, 
we do say the same things, I think. Uh, one of the main things we um, find important is that students are active learners. And I think yeah, you have to activate students, uh, keep them attention, keep them awake. But also by activating them, um, asking them questions, you're um, yeah, stimulating deep learning, stimulating a better understanding of the subject matter. And I also did hear um, something about feedback. And yeah, we, we th also think feedback and formative assessment are really important um, for students because they know where I, am I, uh, uh, some feedback for themselves, but also for teachers. Uh, do they get feedback when they do formative assessment, a quiz, a poll? They hear from students. Um, do they understand what I told? Um, is there something I should pay extra attention to? So yeah, I really agree. <laughs> Definitely. All right. Thank you, Eva, for sharing your viewpoints. And let's get started with our second part of this webinar, the testimony from AP University. So please, Eva, feel free to introduce you, your institution, and let our audience know how the decision-making process took form internally when you decided to go for an interactive pedagogical tool. Yeah. I'm Eva Delvaux from the App University of Applied Sciences and um, Arts in Antwerp. So we are an institution for higher education and we are based in Antwerp, Belgium. I think um, we have 16,000 students and 1,300 teachers. And we have um, associate programs, professional bachelors and master of arts. For, um, yeah, it's to say we have students ranging from 18 years or older. Um, and yeah, um, in our institution, we use um, the learning management system Moodle, uh, we call it Digitap. And I think, yeah, we have a, a very different programs. We have, um, yeah, we have uh, psychology, um, we have an IT department, we have a nursing, we have real estate uh, education department. So. We have, we have a lot of it. And yeah, we also have the School of Arts where we give music, theater, uh, fashion, visual arts. So we are a really um, big institution. Um, and I think, yeah, the need for a good interactive pedagogical tool, it emerged during COVID. Um, I think, yeah, we got a lot of question about it. Um, yeah, people who use a platform, but it has its limitations. Um, People who are searching for a solution and they need a suggestion for a tool. And yeah, we really did feel the need for um, to activate students. Um, especially, we also have a bigger group of students in some programs. So yeah, there was really a yeah, need for a tool to, to do it. And yeah, um, yeah, we, we did look around what are the possibilities, uh, what do we need, um, which tools there are, and yeah. And we uh, need a tool for both an online context and an on-campus context. So, yeah, it was, um, yeah, there was a need and we need to search for it. And, yeah, it was also um, a thing that we needed to convince the management. Yeah, but because, yeah, we already had a learning management system and we had uh, digital tools, but we really, really did miss, uh, yeah, an interactive tool to question students. All right, now I got it. Like, yes, of course, it takes some time here. And, and I must ask, why did you choose WooClap amongst all the other solutions, as many of us are overwhelmed with tech tools nowadays, right? Yeah, that's right. There are a lot of options. So, yeah, we are, we're looking around, and yeah, we needed, um, we want to go for one tool that was suitable for the whole institution. And yeah, there was a big wish list of functions we need. And um, I think WooClub um, did meet a lot of, yeah, did check boxes a lot. Um, yeah, there was there were a lot of different question types, uh, just not a polling question type, but also other question types. Um, you can show the answers in different ways to students. You can do it um, in an online lesson on campus, but you can also use an asynchronous mode. 
And it, you can also use it with bigger groups of students, as we have in some programs, groups of 100 students, 200 students. So that was also important. But maybe the most important one, um, we, are, we are try to look for edtech tools that integrate with our own tools we already have. And I think um, integration with Moodle of Google Lab is really nice. Uh, you have a link to the question bank. Um, you can use quizzes from Moodle and uh, export them to Google Lab. And you have a link with the gradebook. So it's really nice. And you have a, also an integration with PowerPoint and Microsoft Teams. So yeah, as we use Office um, also in our institution, that was also a nice extra. All right, look at that. Thank you, Eva. Now I'm curious to ask, like, how did the deployment of WooClap take place within your institution? And particularly um, when we launched the pilot phase, and for those who, who have not yet heard about a WooClap pilot phase, basically, this is an evaluation moment of one semester where you are able to test WooClap within your cur current working environment. And so during this pilot phase, Eva, which teams were mobilized what was your plan, basically? Yeah, I think in the beginning, we started really small. And we were looking around and, and saw, oh, Google Lab, maybe it's something. But, and, but we first started it with our small team of six people. And we just test a little bit and thought, oh, it's nice. Eh? And then we, uh, when we got um, questions from teachers who were searching for something, we said, oh, do you like to test? Um, and yeah, I think when we got some feedback from teachers and we all we all had some teachers already using it with another institution. We thought, oh yeah, maybe we could test with more people. And then we start looking for teams of teachers to use it and ask their feedback. And yeah, that was a startup. And yeah, you have to testing with the teacher, but we also have to test the tool and as a whole. Um, do does it work? Um, how does it integrate with Moodle? Um, yeah, we also have to check with our IT department. Is everything okay with the tool? Uh, yeah, the financial department. Um, yeah, to, we also had to convince our management about the uh, possibilities of the tools. So it was really nice to have a whole semester to test, especially not only to test the functionalities, but also there was possibility to test um, the Moodle integration first at our test platform and afterwards testing it in the main platform. So yeah, it was really useful. And I think during that full semester, we also got um, yeah from Moodle Lab a pilot dashboard where we could find all the information we need, the technical information, how to set up um, the Office 365 login, um, how to set the integration with Moodle. But also, um, yeah, all the tutorials about yeah the possibilities of Wook Lab, um, the tutorial about PowerPoint integration, and yeah, there was also a useful script of our Wook Lab training. We did use a lot um, to train our teachers in yeah the use of Wook Lab. All right, lovely. So since our pilot project came to an end. Uh, how have you enabled the continuity to deploy WooClap to your teaching staff? Because I'm thinking about how did you communicate about the tool internally? Did you have a process uh, for guiding and training uh, the teaching staff uh, in the use of the platform? How, how did you tackle that? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You have the piloting phase, and then you do a big rollout. Uh, when we decided we go for a Wook Lab, um, yeah, we start with communicating. Uh, with I think uh, when we roll out a digital tool, we use the same steps over and over. And I think first we send the mail to the whole um, app community um, with yeah, there is a new tool, and yeah, you you have some information just short text about what is it and then we sent a link to the manual so teachers who are interested could see oh what is it and yeah we have a, a course in Moodle where there are manuals about digital learning and so teachers can look there what are the possibilities and we also uh, announced um, two workshops where they could yeah digital workshop shops where they could listen to and see the tool and experience the tool and I think, yeah, the first session was a really success. I think um, there were 60 teachers joining us in uh, our quick fix, quick fix, as we call it. And yeah, um, so yeah, it was a good start. 
And after that first uh, moment of communication and first workshops, we started to do sessions for specific pro programs. We, uh, we talk with um, the head of specific programs a lot and we have workshops, we offer them. So we say, oh, hi, we have this workshop. And I think uh, WooClub is still a popular session. When we are asked from, uh, we had got an ask from a teacher team, could you give a workshop for us about some yeah, digital learning or pedagogic aspects? I think Google Lab is a very popular one. So we're still doing that. Um, we also got a lot of questions. Um, we have an email address uh, for support about digital learning. And yeah, we got a lot of questions regarding regarding activating students. And we, yeah, yeah, Google Lab is a, a popular answer, I have to say. And yeah, we still do um, open sessions for teachers. I think we do two every semester where they can come to us and we yeah, show them some possibilities. We coach them in making a home book club quiz. And uh, yeah, I think the latest session, um, you see it on the slides, we made a big app quiz um, where we used all the different question times of book club and we made for each question type uh, a question. And you see um, them on the slide. Uh, one is an easy, yeah, just simple multiple choice, which tea you can drink in the teacher room. But we also have a photograph where they have to pinpoint uh, Matthias Schoenaert, who is uh, a famous act actor in, yeah, in Belgium, Flemish. And yeah, he studied up, so yeah. Uh, and then yeah, the, the I think the other one is, um, it's a map of Antwerp and they have to name the campus um, building. Um, so yeah, this is a nice example um, of how we are using MOOC Lab. Um, but uh, I think we also have um, some good examples from teachers too. Um, yeah, I um, this one is uh, about uh, class mechanics. Um, at the left side, you see um, yeah the Moodle layouts. And I think uh, the teacher made for every lesson a MOOC Lab. And he, yeah, it's mechanics is it's really mathematical. So there are also a lot of possibilities in Wook Lab to do it with mathematical questions. I think um, yeah, the graph you see above is about um, you have an object and what is the, the yeah how do, does it move? What is the motion? And they have to pinpoint it on the graph. And um, the other one is a yeah. Uh, yeah, a mathematic question about the calculation and you have to fill in a word cloud. But yeah, there's also uh, the right answer is also behind it. So yeah, they get um, a point when it's right. And um, the um, um, yeah, there is also a little quiz mode at the Wedstrijd. Yeah, the game mode is also on. So yeah, students yeah can see their own um, points. And yeah, this is just an example of how it was used in class on campus online. But we also have um, some uses of the asynchronous mode. So what you see here is um, also integrated in the Moodle and um, they use it in a, as a check-in and check-out. So before the lessons, um, they fill in a uh, check-in about it's for an education course. So it's about their own teachers who learn to teach. And uh, yeah, before they um, answer some questions and during the lessons, um, the teacher can show it to them, um, what are the answers. Um, and also students can see their own answers because it's a, a synchronous mode. Um, and then during the lessons, they talk about uh, different topics. And after the lessons, they do a checkout um, where they reflect on their own thoughts about, yeah, how did, do, do they give lessons? So yeah, it's also a really good practice of how Moodle is used um, by our teachers, I think. And okay. yeah. Do go yeah. ahead if you'd like to add something more. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, there's still work to do. Uh, we're still deploying Mooc Club, um, but there's also a great help um, from Mooc Club itself. We have a, Custom success manager, Christopher. And yeah, we still get a lot of questions from teachers. And yeah, we can, can ask him to Christopher, oh yeah, we have um, a question about this. Um, do you know the answer? Or yeah, you can show us the new features. Or yeah, we also can give feedback. Uh, yeah, we want to do this, but we miss the feature. So 
Yeah, there are lots of possibilities. Uh, we can also see the user statistics. So I think, yeah, the deployment is still going on, but we get a lot of help from Google App. So it's nice. <laughs> That's great. Thank you for sharing this, Eva. And my final curious question to you. So what has been the impact of WooClap on your teaching staff and your students? What, what is their precious feedback, basically? Yeah, I think we got a lot of positive feedback. Um, They're all very enthusiastic. Um, yeah, students find it user friendly. And yeah, they are happy there is just one tool and not uh, so many different tools. And for our teachers, yeah, they are really exploring the possibilities. And we do get a lot of questions about how can we use it, how we can do this. And yeah, I think um, now we even get questions from teachers who are asking, oh, but can our students use it too? Because yeah, I do see the possibility of using yeah, WooClub and the projects they have to do. And yeah, it's really nice. They, the students can also use WooClub just the same way as teachers use it. So that's also nice. That's great. Thank you for this. This is amazing feedback. All right. Um, thank you for sharing your experience of WooClub at AP University. So dear audience, before I'm going to check in on any questions that you might have, I'd like to just sum up quickly um, what we've been going through during this session. So firstly, we don't just opt for a student voting system. We actually choose a pedagogical tool that works within the existing working environment of teaching staff and students and is to be used as such that it fosters neuron activation, memory retrieval and feedback maximization following the seven principles explained by Steve Masson. And also secondly, the deployment of the tool starts with an evaluation phase first where all stakeholders are involved. So not only the teaching staff, the learners and the support staff come in, but also the support from WooClap as well to maximize that uh, effectiveness of the pilot. And thirdly, when students are happy and the teaching staff is asking more advanced questions on the use of WooClap, the impact is quite clear. And this is where, uh, why we're here at WooClub, of course, to bring you an impactful learning experience embedded within your daily working environment. So let's take a look at any questions that you might have. Maybe my, my colleagues already answered in the chat. Let me see here. Uh, I think we're quite all right. I'm just waiting if my colleagues are getting yeah, something. I see a question for me, I think. Uh, um, Eva, okay. did you, Eva, did you share the seven principles of learning with teachers and do you find that many are following them and using WooClub? I think, um, yeah, we don't use the uh, seven principles individually because we have uh, our own pedagogical uh, model. Um, we yeah, we use with teachers, but yeah, I think there is a lot of similarities. Um, we have one about activating students and interaction with students, and I, I and yeah, the formative assessment um, and yeah, repeating the things. And I, I see a lot of similarities, and I even think it's included in our pedagogical mo model, but it's just an element. And I think yeah, um, yeah, we do recognize the importance of the seven principles. Great. I don't see anything more here in our chat. So I hope, Patty, this is an answer to your question. Feel free. And anyone else that would love to interact or ask questions to us, feel free as well. I still see some people typing, so. All right, so Martin uh, Shoot from Reason has a question. Um, can you explain the difference 
between H5P and WooClap and how you can optimize your Moodle environment using both. Eva, please go ahead. Yeah, I think yeah there are um, some similar uh, exercises in HFP and WooClub, but I think the interaction with WooClub is more um, yeah there is more in, yeah more possibility to interact as just a live interaction. You can uh, launch WooClub and see coming in the interactions, and I think with WooClub you have more possibilities to follow up students. Uh, with HFP integration, you also have some possibilities, but with WooClub, um, it's really, yeah, you can present the answers in different ways and you can um, import it in the grade book. And so, yeah, it's more um, when you use it the synchronous way, yeah, it's more, you only have WooClub. And when you use it as synchronous options, I think you have more um, options to follow it up. So I think HFFP is just to exercise things and Google App is more to question students about a particular topic. Yeah. All right. And I see that Patty also added H5P does not allow for deferred feedback and does not provide the analytics of uh, the student, student learning across time. Um, let us check in because I think that we still had another question uh, from Terry. Hi, Terry. Um, do many of your teachers, Eva, share WooClap events or questions with each other? Um, I think, yeah, um, some teachers do. Um, um, there is a, an option to, um, there are many options in WooClap to share it. You can collaborate, you can just import an event. Now even have the template option where you can put a template and, and use it and, and of your own. So yeah, I think um, they share it a lot. Um, yeah, especially because um, they made PowerPoint and they sent the PowerPoint to another person and then yeah, they can I'll see, oh, there is WooClub and then yeah, they share the questions too. We also have a lot of parallel teachers. So yeah, that way they can share it too. Great, thank you, Eva. All right, so still checking in. Uh, Patty has a technical question. Uh, she's saying we love to integrate WooClub with Teams, but for security reasons, users are not allowed to access uh, the Microsoft Store. Is there any other option for Teams integration? Well, this is where you can always share your screen as well during your Teams um, and not use the add-in. But basically why we have chosen to set up the add-in with Microsoft Teams is that students don't need to toggle between windows. So basically they stay in that same working environment. So just sharing your screen and asking them to answer throughout uh, their personal devices could be an option as well. But maybe we can help you to convince your IT security team because we have also lots of documentation on that and we can help you out with that as well. So I hope this also answers uh, your question, Patty. All right. So basically, I think we uh, don't have any questions anymore. Um, if you still might have them, do not hesitate to send me an email, Annalise at wooclap.com, or just give me a quick call. I'd be happy to get you acquainted with the information that you need. And again, Ava, any last words before leaving our dear audience here? Um, it was very nice. I could be here today and I hope it's, yeah, my explanation about Book Lab inspired people. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your time and thank you, dear audience, to be here with us today. Hope to see you soon. Bye. <laughs>